Hello! This is Janos. It's Real World Audio. And today we are... We... <laughs> I'm... Because the cats are away, they are out in the garden. So it's not we, it's just I. I'm going to answer a very technical question. And it's about uh, rectification. Because if you remember, then uh, I introduced uh, a single-ended triode build, a little project that you can do for very little money as far or as long as tube amplifiers go, probably one of the cheapest to build projects that you can <laughs> find. And uh, I recommended it, I gave uh, solid state rectification to build it with. And uh, 29 just emailed me like, uh, Janos, why did you recommend it with, with solid state diodes? Are, are they your favorites or can I go with tubes instead or what can I do with it? And uh, what do I recommend? Or, or even for other projects, if you want to build another tube amplifier, why should you go for diodes and when you should go for uh, tube rectifiers and, and which tube rectifier to use when you go the tube road. So basically, number one, my recommendation for the Baby Darling project, because it is a project that I recommend for those of you who never built a tube amplifier in your life and you want to start with one, then that's a nice project to start with. Of course, if you never built a tube amplifier, don't build it by yourself, don't do it alone. It's a very uh, risky thing. Just remember, these electronic equipments have live voltage in them, on them. So recruit the uh, mentorship, the tutelage of a professional who guides you through the process. So, so you can do that part without danger that you put together the things, solder them together, but to turn it on and test it, to put it under voltage, from that point on, you must. You must and you must ask the uh, a professional to supervise that process or do that process for you. And then you can look him, uh, see him, do what does he do and explain what are the dangers there? So from that point on, when you are ready to flip the switch, it's, 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 uh, assistance is a must. I just have to just hammer this again as a disclaimer and as, as a fair warning for everyone who doesn't want to get himself or family members or pets electrocuted or your house burned down. It's that serious. And don't let that discourage you from trying to build a tube amp. There are the exact same dangers if you want to build a solid state amp, if you want to open up a, a deck, or if you want to repair your toaster. All of these <laughs> have these warnings coming to us. So, so when you plug anything to the wall, it's, it becomes deadly serious. And it, it's no matter if the voltages are low enough, if you don't know or maybe like like there's like a transformer going into it or, or that solid state stuff. Maybe it's like just use this uh, rectified 50 volts DC, but there's high enough current. There can be malfunctions, problems, and uh, you, you could touch the uh, live wire part and um, that's it. Then it's game over. No more audio, no more, mm, no more roses. So coming back to answering the question, I recommended the solid state diodes because it's a beginner's project. And if you are a beginner, then one of the biggest challenges is to do a layout and to wire two things together because this is a point to point wiring project. It's not like a circuit board that you buy a circuit board, uh, buy all the parts, you put it together, psh, no, no second thought whatsoever. When you do point-to-point -point wiring, then you need to understand how you read the wires, what you do, how do you use something. And if you use a rectifier tube, as a, as a newbie, as a total beginner, your chances that your amplifier will hum, will make boo buzzing noise or some problems with it, will exponentially increase if you use 
a rectifier tube instead of solid state diodes. So the only reason for me recommending diodes for the baby um, baby darling project is uh, simplicity and to make a first amplifier build a very enjoyable experience. Basically, by that recommendation, I'm almost like doubling your chances to, to have uh, success for the first try. And uh, now going for the answer, like what diodes do I recommend? I think I believe I, I did give a, a parts list as a recommendation, but you can use any kind of diodes as long as they are uh, ultra fast diodes, at least. You can use ultra fast diodes, any kind you want, uh, like, like the one U and then the four letters, like one U4004, something like that. Or 104007 or any of the 400 series that has plenty of uh, voltage and current rating for the amp that you want to build. That's the absolute minimum. Uh, th there are the uh, run of the mill diodes, the 1N series, like 1N4007, that you find in. Uh, 95% of all audio gear on the market, that's absolute junk crap, never ever touch it. And uh, the one U series will cost you maybe like five cents more per diode or something, so it's not, not a back-breaking back thing, but it's good enough that it will, it's able to switch fast, so you don't have those nasties that the slow switching diodes, the, the one and series do. And uh, but you can do much better than the one U series diodes or the FR307, that's also like an old fast recovery diode. So that's another name, ultra fast diode or fast recovery diode. UF or FR, so these are some designation that, that you can search for these diodes. Uh, if you want to go something even better, then you can look for uh, Schottky diodes like Cree diodes, which are silicon carbide shot keys. Those are really, really good, but they are not cheap. Let me just grab it for you. Uh, let me Google it for you, that, that type of situation. Let's see. Here it is. Let me click on it. Okay, let's just randomly look it up and just type in Cree diode, like C-R-E-E -E diode, click on the first link. This is how these, that's how these diodes look like, Cree. And, and, and you saw like a crazy price tag on it, like $15 for one diode. Of course, you can like look for Mauser or DigiKey or whatever supplier you have in your country. Uh, for me, Mauser and DigiKey are the ones which are the most ready and where you can get the best prices for diodes, basically. And then you go for the product description, you can see it, but now I, I cannot see it when I'm showing it, so I have to read it out. And basically the important bit was that it said SICK Schottky diode, but that SIC doesn't mean SICK, it means silicon carbide. So that's the material that it's made of, and these are the most expensive Schottky diodes you can have, and it has an 11 ampere rating and 1.2 kilovolt rating. And the TO220, it means that it looks that it looks like a, a, a transistor, but it's only two legs. That's how you know it's a diode, because it's a, it's a two legs only. If it has three legs, then it might be a transistor or a double diode with a common cathode. So, so if you find uh, like that, like a double diode package, then the the center leg will be the cathode, and it has two anodes. So. You can use it like this, but uh, that's why this is just a... But they, they are pretty expensive. Uh, you can look for other shot keys. Most of the shot keys don't have this high voltage rating. And, uh, and you, you would need uh, to look at what is your voltage requirement. Don't look at the rectified DC voltage look at what the transformer secondary voltage and, and give it like a, a headroom over that. So if your transformer secondary is like 220 volts AC, 
then I would recommend at least 300, 400 volt rated diode to handle that. So if it's 220, don't get like a 200 volt or a 250 volt rated diode. You need to take into account that you don't want to stress out the diode. You want the diode's voltage rating quite a bit higher than the voltage it sees. And that will be a guarantee that one, it will last long enough so that you will never be, never need to change it, never need to replace it in the life of the equipment. And number two, that because it's not stressed, it's not going to have problems uh, acting as a diode. Because what the diode does is that the voltage goes like super duper duper high and then it drops low and then when, when uh, it, uh, the voltage starts rising again, it has to block and stop it. Now, if it has to block something that's well within its working range, it has no problem blocking that voltage and working as a diode. But when it's stressed out, then that blocking at, at, at the peak voltage, it, it will ring like a bell. It will have problems. And, uh, and what you see in most audio gear, that, that's one reason why you need to change diodes, because they wear out. And they still work as a diode, but they will be noisier and noisier year by year because they're pushed too hard. And, and that's why you need to change them. Number one is because they are getting worn out and they can give up anytime. And number two, because they were underrated for, for, for starters. So that's why you want something that can handle higher working voltages and uh, and hopefully switches faster so you don't get that much ringing added by the diode and uh, if you look for short keys uh, short keys don't have reverse leakage ultra fast diodes have very low reverse leakage and normal diodes have a lot of reverse leakage and and it takes them a long time to 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 switch so it, that reverse leakage means that when the voltage is turning over, so from, let's say, from negative it goes back to positive, then your diode doesn't stop right away, but it lets a little bit of the positive getting sucked back. So electrons go one way, and when they want to go the other way, the, the rectifier blocks it and doesn't let them. And that's what a short key does. Uh, and what... Uh, a fast recovery or an ultra fast recovery diode does is that when electrons start to go they ping pong back and ping and very fast it, it stops them but there's a tiny reverse leakage and what a normal diode does which is a slow diode then it's just like going back and it already went back quite a bit and when it stops so there was already like a, the electrons normally just get pushed to your first charging capacitor and the diode prevents them to leak out from the cap again. And if it charge, uh, switches fast, then there's this just a tiny bit of this happening. And if it's a short key, it doesn't let any of that to leak out. So uh, that, that, that's for the uh, solid state diodes. And, and actually that's one reason why uh, solid state diodes add that solid state sound to the uh, flow of music that 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 reversion of the current because that's not instant there's that reverse leakage and uh, that's also shown by the capacitance of the diode so it, it the diode also acts as a little capacitor as a tiny capacitor uh, in series with the signal and, and the, cap, the, the capacitor, which is the power supply, that's in parallel with your power supply, and it stabilizes the voltage. The, 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 the diode, which is in series with the voltage, it, it, it does some ringing. It bing, bing, it provides a sound, a mechanical sound. And uh, you can put snubber on the diode to make it better, but uh, um, it, it's, it's something bad, and it, it, it has its own sonic signature and the vacuum tubes do not have that so that's when you have vacuum tube rectification they do not have this issue of having this uh, mechanical ringing added to the sound um, however what what vacuum tubes do is that they have a much bigger voltage drop 
and that bigger voltage drop is the guarantee that, that you do not have this reverse leakage process. And also the second thing that guarantees that it doesn't happen is that there is vacuum in the tube and there is like a really massive potential difference between the plate and the cathode. So, so that's why the, and only the cathode is heated, so only the cathode is able to emit electrons and the plate cannot uh, give electrons. So that's why a vacuum tube is, is a really nice one-way seal, that, which is a diode should be. But it has a bigger voltage drop. So, so when you change a, 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 a solid-state rectified design for a vacuum tube design, then your B+, plus, your high voltage, will drop a little bit. How much will it drop? It will drop depending on what current you are using, the higher the current you are using, the more the voltage will sag. Uh, is it a problem? Uh, the circuit will work, even with, 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 with a bigger voltage drop, so you don't have to worry about that point, that it will it work or won't it work. Uh, the sound it won't be as, as punchy as, as, as if it would be just with a solid-state diode alone, but it will be much more uh, full with nuances. So if you are going for the soft details in the sound, the soft bits, they will come alive more with the vacuum tube rectification and you will have like like a drum, like boom, bam, snap, not as big, but, uh, but the tiny bits in the flute and, and the human vocal, it will sound like more human, better mid-range. So that's how you can choose which you want what kind of sound you want. And, and if you want one or the other, that's how you can choose solid state rectification or vacuum tube rectification. Or what I recommended, when you look at my Pure Darling version, there's the hybrid version, when you can parallel a vacuum tube with a solid state rec uh, rectifier. And um, then you basically have kind of like the best of both worlds. And, and it will not be as pure sounding as, as a purely tube rectified uh, uh, amplifier, but it will be pretty close to that. And, uh, and it will give you like the exact same operating parameters and power output as, as the design that called for solid state rectifier. So I think that's my answer for that. I hope it was useful and you can uh, use it. And also, uh, when you have a, a diode a rectifier tube, uh, then of course you need to look at the specification. Can it give enough current for your amplifier? So always choose uh, a rectifier that can handle you enough current. Also look at the voltages. What is the voltage you want to get? Make sure that the tube has enough headroom over the voltage to give uh, enough uh, voltage plus current. Plus, when you use a, a vacuum tube rectifier, make sure that your supply is either choke loaded or if it's capacitor input, don't use high capacitance as your first, uh, as the input capacitor. Um, I recommend uh, go the absolute maximum that you can use is 40 microfarad for zero, but if you go lower, the better it is. Um, I would I would suggest like maybe go like for uh, 20 microfarad, but uh, the even if you just drop the the first capacitor value from 40 to 20. The, the hum level on the B plus will drastically increase and you will need to add basically like choke uh, supply is mandatory but I would suggest like multiple stages of chokes like a C, L, C, L, C for uh, a, um, a single ended amp or C, L, C for a push-pull amplifier and then of course additional filtering for the input and driver stages. So I hope these were the most important uh, considerations and I hope that they, they are useful and, and everyone can use this information to just uh, fine-tune 
how you want to build your amplifier. So thank you 29 for the question, have a fantastic build and enjoy the ride, bye bye!